Hello everyone, this is Satvik and this video is an introduction to Pawn Tools. So in the previous videos, we covered some basic binary exploitation skills like stack overflow and return to function. I mean, pointing a function address to an uh, instruction pointer so that you can hijack the control flow of an execution. So if you don't know much about that, so I uh, go and watch those videos. And if you observe in those videos, I use a a command line thing like python3 hyphen c and using import sys and i try to get the flag but there is a utility called as pawn tools which is a very good utility so so this is the pawn tools documentation i'll leave the link for this in the description below so and i'll try to cover some most used functions that you are going to come uh that you're going to use like a lot, lot of time so installation is pretty simple so pip3 install so pip3 install pawn that's the basic thing you can do and i already have this working for me and this is based on python 3 so i guess if you are using kali or any linux distributions python 3 is there by default but if it's not there sudo apt or your package manager install python 3 hyphen pip so that's how it things go and i'll also leave the link for some other labs that i can uh, some other tutorials that i find which are useful uh, you can go through and check that out but uh, i'll be using the same main exploit uh, the exploit that i used where i try to control the flow of the execution by rewriting the execution pointer so i already covered like uh, if i get like multiple bytes you can see i'm getting a main function and here uh, this is an object term so in the uh, let me do it clear yeah so this is an object term and in the op so it's like uh, the view, uh, the way to view your assembly code instead of going to gdb every time so this is a very cool thing and you can see read name is a function and win is a function so in order to get a flag you need to point this to a win function so that you will get a flag so if you observe carefully in the last video this is what we have done uh, so this is what we have done so a 22 times to reach to the ebp and the next address is going to be your eip or since this is a 32 bit it's an eip if you are dealing with a 64 bit versions it is going to be a rip or just replaces e with r and this is the address of uh, you know uh, the win function you can see here the win function is the same address but uh, if you observed last time i had to hard code this like uh, this is in a little indian format so you know every byte should be in the reverse format so like 08 is going to be at the end and 86 is going to be at the uh, front so you know it, you need to hard code that and this is going to be a bit pain because if you're dealing with the 64 bit machines or if you have like multiple addresses to pass which we will deal in the return to lipsy sorry uh, which we'll uh, encounter in the further parts of this series so in the return to lipsy you pass multiple functions like system of uh, address of pin bash and also the exit address so you can uh, type all these things so that's the reason pawn tools is really helpful uh, let me run this again so that you can uh, see that sorry so you can see this is how your flag is going to be and if you want to understand more about how this actually i got i, I would recommend you to watching my previous uh, previous video so i'll leave the link for that in the description below so go there and check that out so let's open my exploit so this is my exploit so let's start writing from pawn import start so this is like a basic python syntax and you can create a binary okay a variable called binary uh, which is very useful this is like uh, i'll tell you why it's useful like most people don't write this but uh for example if i want to find the symbol i mean the address of this win function i had to go to this object dump every time but i can find something like this win address equal to a binary dot symbols sorry uh, symbols dot win i mean the uh, the symbol which you want to find and now you can do something like print win address let's see if you can print this thing let me close this and let me enlarge my screen a little bit you can see i'm getting some kind of like a decimal value which is not useful because your addresses are going to be in uh, 
hexadecimal format so that's one thing you can do here is like there is a built-in function called as p32 so this converts in this does all the hard part of like converting into little indian and all since we are dealing with a 32 bit binary i'm using 32 bit if you are dealing with a 64 bit binary feel free to use p64 that's pretty simple and you can see we have the address so this is what we have hard coded in this thing so you know instead of doing it every time i can automate this process so that my job gets easier so this is a cool thing so win address is a really important part because we are pointing this to this and we can just write p32 of i mean i'm using this code uh vs code of like uh, open source version and it's very slow i'm very sorry for my delays and all but yeah and now we can generate a payload which is going to be uh, 32 bytes of a or 22 bytes of a plus the win address okay so this is the pretty simple part now let's load the binary into the memory so this particular binary is trying to it's like kind of an object term where you find symbols and stuff like that but in order to run this binary uh, you need to use something like a uh, process you need to load into a you need to load into a process so that it gets loaded into your memory slash main so this is how you do it actually so that your process is created in your memory and you get more stuff uh, but the thing here is like the win address uh, there are some complications with this method too which we will uncover in the further parts like sometimes if the asl or i mean the address randomization is set then there is a good chance that your win address which you see when you do an object dump and the win address you see during your uh, your application getting run or your binary getting run is going to be different so we'll try to tackle those situations in the further parts of this series so for this let's do in order to send a payload so p dot send line off so there are like two types of uh, functions here send and send line so send line in the sense uh, any time you see a line just remember it's a backslash n. okay it's it's a backslash n. So backslash n is nothing but an enter. So if you do an enter, it, it's nothing but a backslash n there. So instead of sending an enter manually, send line is going to work. And sometimes you can also use something like send depending upon how your payload, how your binary is behaving. So one cool thing I can uh, I do is like if you have like main function, if you run a main function, you can see there is something like this coming out. But sometimes you can see like uh, hello and then uh, there may be new line like enter new name. Uh, then maybe an above line like hello and then followed by a new line so you need to understand how that happens and for example if there is some random value coming out which is not useful for you then you can do something like print p dot receive line so that it receives a line and then you send a payload so you need to send a payload at the proper time so this is the key part so uh, even again receive also has like receive and also receive line and also there is one more cool thing called until receive until which is really cool because sometimes when you run binaries you'll get a lot of uh, verbos at the uh, before of where you try to inject your payload and you can do like receive until uh, satvik at the end for example and it tries to receive everything until then and then you can send your payload so but for us it's not required because we are passing within the same line so it's nothing much deal but if it is like enter your name and your name is going down then you should receive that and then you need to send your payload so you'll get more of that uh, when we do more of these challenges and all let's send this payload so uh, sorry let's run our python 3 exploit you can see it started a process and that's all nothing is happening here so let's do a print receive line let's see if this is actually working you can see it is receiving a line so this is the line it's receiving and you can see the flag is over here so this is a pretty simple example and uh, you know i would suggest you to go to the rop emporium and do red to win uh, which is a good challenge i'll show you that uh, and i'll try to cover it in the next video so no worries there is something called as red to win by rop emporium so this is like same you return to a win function same so this is like the same what we are doing but uh, this has like multiple functions and all and it's very simple to i'll cover this in the next video in like a very short video so that you can understand what's happening there but yeah this is the part here and uh, sometimes in ctfs you can see that they give you a local binary to run and also a service 
where uh, where this binary is, is offering a service there so how to connect there so in that situations uh, this binary and all this won't work to be honest okay this win address also won't work because your local binary uh, address maybe if it is same then you can use the same win address function but uh, assume that it's same so let's assume that it's same but if it is getting different then it's uh, no use then i would suggest something like host create a variable host for example challenge.com port for example 444 okay instead of process instead of loading into the memory you need to connect to that so equals to remote of host comma port this is the basic thing and then the same payload works so uh, generally what happens if i'm doing a ctf or like most people who do ctf is like they download the local binary try to find the exploit for that and once it is working they just change these variable they just add the host and port and p equal to remote of host comma port and then yeah it's same it's the same uh, thing instead of loading into the binary it's you're connecting to a service that's a, a, a small trick here so you can see more of this in this pawn tools thing so even this is a very good uh, exp uh, very good tutorial you can go and check that out so we have like cyclic and all they have like so many functions you can do you can even do gdb dot attach as well uh, if you want to attach you can see process send line interactive so for example if your payload is giving you a shell then you can use something like uh, uh, which are uh, doesn't give but interactive okay if you give an interactive something like that you will get a shell session if you are executing something that gives you a shell but here we are just running a function and that's that's how it is but in the next part of this video a uh, series where we'll cover red to lipsy where you will get a shell and we'll be using the speed dot interactive as well this is a really cool thing okay uh you can write some shell code too but uh, you know i would suggest using some out uh, shell code that is out there for you which is really useful and also you have something like gdp dot attach okay so if you want to attach this to a gdb let's see i think it won't be much useful but patch of p uh, and also let me remove all these things host and port are not required for us at the moment uh, let's do the process So it just launches a new shell with the GDB and all these things. So it's like it, it can be pretty useful because uh, this can be really useful when you are trying to, uh, you know, understand where the flow is going to. But here in our case, we already found uh, a place where you are, uh, which is which can point to an EIP or an RIP. So that's the reason it's pretty simple. But uh, sometimes you can give like thousand days and open gdb and see okay you can see your stack diagram and stuff like that so we can automate that too that's really cool uh, but personally i try to do it manually by inputting into the gdb and identifying the where the point is but you can do this as well which is really cool and that being said there are like so many functions uh which you can really use uh, and i think i covered some of the most important things that you might come across and i leave the link for all the resources in the description below so go there and check that out and thank you for watching this video this is atvik signing off and i'll meet you in the next one bye